the next performer on the stage tonight. I think he is an institution in his own right. Permit me, ladies and gentlemen, if I want to say that this man is a living legend today. He started many, many years ago, before we had TV. He was on radio. I am making fun. I'm talking about John Agitation. Sunny man. Agitation with true life sensation designed for your mental relaxation. All you're supposed to clap for that. Hey, you know, relator, really leave the stage and run. Relator, really come, come. Before I start talking to all you, I want to tell all you something will happen in the airport. The day we fly to come to Trinidad, to, to New York. Relator, don't go. <laughs> Sit down here and hear. I don't like to talk behind people back. That's why I ask you to come on stage. I want a lady from either backstage or the audience to come on stage to do this demonstration. Anybody here? Here we have a lady. Give she a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Give she a hand. This happened. Friday, we're getting ready to catch plane to come to New York. Relator and he girl in the airport, she come to see he off. Look at Relator, how he hug up he girl. And I hear what they say in a papa. <laughs> Darling, the way I love you, I can't love an other woman like you in a thousand years. Same time a nice woman walk in the airport. Look at Relator. Girl time could fly, eh? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, darling. Well, you know, I is the kind of fella I eh, qualify to talk the kind of English like them fellas. I qualify in three main languages. Good English, bad English, and obscene language. <laughs> and this evening, I want to tell all you about John Agitation. You see, everybody know and hear the name John Agitation, but they don't know much about the man. Let me start from when I was born. go belong. I want you to know I'm serving the third generation now. I was born in a little village called Kumuto in Trinidad. I have 63 years now. And for that 63 years, the population in Kumuto remained the same. It had changed. You see, every time a child born in Komoto, a fella missing. <laughs> He's under that condition I born. <laughs> well, I start to go to school in the school day. One day the teacher say, boy, inspector coming tomorrow. I say, lay inspector, come now, who afraid inspector? Car pulled alongside the school, and Mr. Walking, he say, he's inspector, he watched me good. He say, young man, what is your name? I said, John Agitation, sir. He said, you have a nice long name. You could spell? I say, yes, sir. He said, well, I want you to spell chicken. Well, boy, that is hard word for a five-year-old fella. Chicken. I said, chicken, sir? Well, I have to use my brains. I said, if I could spell hen, H-E-N, which is chicken mother, where is chicken to spell?
The inspector tell me I pass my exam. <laughs> well, my father said, no, you have to learn a profession. Son, you're going to pack yourself and go to your good father. Now in the days when your father tell you you have to go by your godfather, you can't argue, you know, Papa. It's go by your godfather, you're going, you know. He said, you're going by your godfather to learn to lie. He's the best liar in Arima. And you have to go to learn that profession. Well, Papa, I take my brown paper bag in those days, didn't have grip and thing. And I gone to Arima by my godfather. Three months the man put me sit down teaching me to lie. That's not a little bit of work now, Papa. <laughs> Learning to lie is easy, no, pal. I know some of you fellas could lie good. Especially for your wife. But even your wife does know you're lying, so that I know real lying. Later on, we will talk about that. After three months, one morning, he get up, he said, Good son. I say, yes, Godfather. He say, exam today. I say, all right, Godfather. You can't argue with you, Godfather, you know. He put me in a bus, Papa, and he carried me down Carenage on a jetty. Only I know Carenage, but Carenage is near the beach. And it have a long American jetty there. He put me stand up on the jetty, and two miles away, it have an island called Caledonia Island. He said, Godson, you seen that island? I said, yes, Godfather. He said, what's good in the island? Tell me if you don't see a tree in the center of the island with a branch leaning in the south. Well, I know he wants me to lie. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, yes, Godfather. I seen the branch leaning on the south. He said, all right, what's good on that branch? Tell me if you don't see a botness. <laughs> well, it's now I hot in my eye to lie. <laughs> I, I say, yes, Godfather, I see the botness. He said, all right, what's good in the botness? Tell me if you don't see three young ones. Well, I watch good. Well, I now have to lie. I say, Godfather, how are you? I do see the three young one now, but I hear him tree, 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 tree. <laughs> well, Papa, I pass my exam again. What work you will get in Trinidad with a qualification as a liar? Huh? What you say? Man, the only work you could get is a reporter working in a newspaper office. Well, I walk straight in the Guardian office and say I have my certificate in line. The editor say we're going to give you a walk. But you have to prove to me as the editor you could make a long story short. That ain't easy to do, you know, Papa. They give me notebook and pencil and think, Papa, I am up myself and I walk in down Frederick Street looking for story. As I go in down the road, I reach a river. A woman washing in the river, and I sit down watching, she washing. A mad fella come, come out from the bush, rape the woman, and throw she body, throw he body back in the bush. Well, I say, sorry, sir, first class. I have an exclusive. I've gone in the office and I write half a sheet of how this mad fella come out from the bush, rape the woman washing and take off and gone. Then I remember the editor say, I have to make a long story short. So I write, throw away that piece of paper, put in another sheet in the machine and I write, Ellie, not screws washer and bolt.
will I qualify for the work? Will I start working now or looking for a woman to marry Papa? You know how young men long time was when they get work, they fresh. And through the time I walk in, I see a girl through a window and I and she, we eye catch. You know long time is your eye used to catch, eh? <laughs> you couldn't see a woman walking in the road all the time of the day and hug she up and think, you know, Papa, you I have to catch. <laughs> so we eye catch to the window. And I go and I talk into she to the window. And is there falling in love by the window. And the old man now know I come in on evening to talk to the girl. He put a bench by the window for me. So is so we making love. I holding she hand. And I talking to she and I sit down on the bench. One day while we making love. She said, as you do it. I said, mm hmm. She said, I born under the sign Scorpio. What sign you born under? I said, do it. I born under a sign mark house for rent. <laughs> she said, Ajila, we get married now, boy. But listen, you have to write my father a letter for me. But when you write him, my father, don't write no stupid letter, you know, because he is a kind of man and want me married, no illiterate fella. So you have to write a convincing letter. You see how much trouble we had to go into get a woman long time, Papa? Eh, is he like, no, you know. No man had deputy and all. <laughs> eh, we couldn't even get one. We had to pass a university test to get a woman. Well, Papa, I gone home and I get paper and pencil and I sit down and start to work my brain on how to convince this old man. And I write, Dear sir, after long consideration and deep meditation of the great reputation you possess in the nation, I have a strong inclination to become your relation. On acceptation of my declaration, I will make preparation without hesitation to move my location to a more convenient situation. Then for the solemnization of my matrimonization will be a grandization of yours truly, John Agitation. Well, Papa, we married and thing. We're looking for house to buy, house and land now, because you're married, you want place to live. Make y'all reading hard on the paper. She say, as she come, do we come, do we see? Like we go have to buy this place. What do you think the ad reading on the papers? Advertising land for sale. A young woman has a piece of land for sale. Hear the ad. It is situated between two hills. And through it flow a stream of clear water. It was given to her by her father 18 years ago and vegetation has slightly blocked its view. But it is a wonderful sight for a pushy young man with a stiff capital. Time. Let me rest a little bit. In my time, I see a lot of things. A lot of things. Because I tell you, I have 63 years. But one of the most fascinating things I see was just recently, they talk about drugs. Drug is joke. I see a fella, we are all big people, eh? I see a fella soaking his penis in coffee all day so he could stay up all night.
we have a little well, we have a little problem in our country. I know we have a lot of West Indians here, we have Trinidadians, we have Jamaicans. I want to tell you of a problem that we are experiencing in our country. You see, with the capitalist reform that is going on in the East, we are experiencing capitalists not wanting to make investments in our country. And I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that this, is will, this problem will go on for the next 30 years. Because the capitalists they want to come to we country, all them third world countries getting demoted now, you know, boys. We're going to fifth world now. <laughs> and let me tell you something We happened just recently here in New York. I hear an American and a Russian talking. As a fellow does hear, and I does talk, but let us go and see what I say, in fact. <laughs> The American was telling the Russian, it will take you all 100 years before you can get a democracy equivalent to the one we have in the United States of America. The Russian said, what do you mean? I don't understand. We have a democracy in Russia. The American said, let me tell you something about democracy in the United States of America. As a born American, I can walk to the White Hall, take out my ID, Show it to the security. He will let me in. I walk straight up to President Bush. I look at President Bush in his face. I say, President Bush, you stinks. And nothing happened. That's the sort of democracy we enjoy in the United States of America. The Russians say the same thing. No different. In Russia, no different. As a born Russian, I can go to the Kremlin. I show my ID. They let me in. I go straight up to Premier Gorbachev. I say, Premier Gorbachev, President Bush stinks and nothing happens. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been a beautiful audience. Give yourself a round of applause for being such a good audience. I want to thank, I want to say a special thank you to Jean for inviting me here to be addressing a beautiful set of people like you. Give Jean a hand, ladies and gentlemen. I think Jean deserves a round of applause. Um, before I leave my stage though, I should tell you just two things. Is that the sugar industry in Trinidad is disappearing. And only recently some sugar workers confronted me with the problem. They said, John, the government want to do away with sugar. Just now we ain't gonna have no work. What we gonna do? They're planting citrus in the sugar lands. And there is going to be no sugar in Trinidad and no sugar workers. What are we going to live by? I say, hold your hand, fellas. I had to think, eh? I say, hold your hand. Let me tell all you something and believe it. In any country in the world where they're producing sugar, nobody can stop that. You know why? Sugar go back to the days of inception. If you are to read the pages of your Bible, you will see when Adam and Eve was thrown out of the Garden of Eden, they raised Cain. <laughs> Finally now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave my stage here tonight with just one thought in your mind. A friend of mine who is now 60, retired from work, he told his wife, he said, listen, honey, I don't work, so I go to church every Sunday. When I was working, I didn't have time to go to church. Now I ain't working, I go to church. She said, darling, I love to hear you say that. Sunday morning, man put on the church clothes. <laughs> you know, in Trinidad, we had church clothes. 
Well, I put on his church clothes, Papa. And he gone to church. He come back with half of his face bust up. His wife said, what happened? He said, girl, people funny. People real funny. A girl sit down at the side of me. Get up to go for communion. When she stand up, I see she dressed, ticking in she bottom. Now this happens, eh? So I pull it out. And this is what happened. The wife said, you must be careful with people. Close. So I said, well, I didn't know. Two weeks later, he go back to church. He come back with the other side bus up. The wife said, what happened now? He said, girl, I tell you, people funny. People real funny. The same woman sit down on my side. She got up to go for communion. She just sticking in she bottom as usual. The fella sitting down on the side as she pull it out. But I know she ain't like it, so, so I push it back. Mr. John Agitation, ladies and gentlemen. I think you should do a line up. At least one more. Yeah, don't let him get away so. Just one more and go. Too short. Yes. Yes, bring him on with a little extra. Yeah. Well, when all you ask me to give one more joke, I'm in trouble. You see, my mentality is so limited at this age, I only know a few jokes. But I got to tell you, where I live in the country is a very quiet and peaceful place. You know what I'm talking about. When you see 11 o'clock in the night, all TV and radio off, only dim lights in the house, and the only thing that breaks the serenity of that community is the hooting of owls. Well, I tell you where I live. It's under those conditions, two o'clock one morning. Tony going home drunk from the club, from the club. One club we have in we village. When Tony reached by his neighbor, Myra, two o'clock in the morning. Myra! Well, I have to tell you, all how we wake up thinking is trouble. Myra, oi! Hear Myra. You be why making noise this hour the morning for? Myra, you don't hear the news, girl? She said, why are you trying to embarrass me? And you know I have no radio. <laughs> What's the news? She said, Douglas just knocked out Tyson. Hear Myra. For what? Juby said, Juby said, I hear it's for a million dollars. Myra said, that's so he right. Who tell he to walk out with so much money this hour of the morning? John Agitation, let me hear a round of applause for the man, please. Yeah. <laughs> 